are there organised and vocal groups of detransitioners, parents of trans youth and or trans widows in your country? What we consider detransitioning or transition regret in the West uh, is not exactly the same over here because uh, the, the concept of transitioning happens in multifolds over here. There are uh, um, trans people that are not trans in the conventional sense uh, of how we know it in the West. There are the sociocultural trans like the Hijras and the Aravanis that go in the dark alleys and uh, get their bodies mutilated because uh, it's easier for them to um, seek uh, some sort of a livelihood in the form of uh, begging and uh, prostituting themselves. So if one were to think about um, how that went wrong and now they are reconsidering their decision, it's not exactly how it works over here because um, they're, they're they're probably already regretting it, but um, um, who's going to take accounts of, uh, you know, what their specific reason for regret is, or how are we going to log their suffering because uh, they went and got themselves, they didn't know any better, they went and got themselves surgically amputated. Some of them are known to have bled themselves to death because it was not performed by actual qualified clinicians. So when we talk about detransitioning, we, 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 we don't, we don't, necessarily mean the same thing over here and it is also important for us to understand that in developing countries this whole thing is only just catching up there are a lot of people who are actually sort of wanting in on the trans wagon where they are now actually opting for surgery so for the detransition stories to come up if at all they do come up and i and i suppose it would not come out at all because for just saying things like uh, um, a, um, a woman's safe, um, a trans is safe space is not inside a woman's bathroom got me cancelled. So you can imagine people uh, being terrified of uh, speaking up against it. Perhaps like in the US, if a parent is affected by it, then maybe people will talk about it. I also want to mention a bit about trans widows, the concept of trans widows over here. Um, there are a lot of people that are transing themselves, right? In, in the social cultural context or in the whole urban uh, westernized context. Um, but their stories are often glorified to a point that nobody really cares about their family. Um, to, to a point that, uh, you know, even Mother's Day is about them. Um, nobody really cares about that man's actual mother or wife or whether or not he has a child uh, with a woman, you know, things like that. Um, and trans widows in itself is, as a concept uh, has not been popular in you know your regular mainstream media pop culture so to speak only recently two years ago there was a film tamil film the, the state that i belong the language that i speak there was a film that came out called super deluxe in which there is this man who has uh, a child a, a young boy had just suddenly disappeared and gone to bombay for suspicious reasons okay so he comes back and he wears women's clothes and has this huge breasts and uh, you know the the whole the whole spiel and the film ends in a way where the wife is just so confused as to why the husband thought he had to be away at all because the wife would always have accepted him as he is as a woman it doesn't even matter because she's so devoted in this in this uh, you know the tamil speaking wife that she is that she would have accepted him no matter uh, his life choices no matter how he wants to identify he she understands and she often is uh, happy to embrace him uh, just the way he is uh, including his lifestyle which would mean no sex life with this uh, man anymore and which would also mean that this man would sort of now go into you know these uh, spaces to have his sexual um, uh, gratifications fulfilled so that's that's a man who's made a film and it was so uh, glorified in the media about the portrayal of a trans woman in such a grand manner and 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 here there is this wife who's who is such a useless character in the film without even real they, they portrayed her that way without even realizing what the trauma should have been for this woman who's lived a life and this entire life and is now left with this little boy who's probably not have any who's probably not having any financial means to take care of uh, the child by herself in the uk there's the detransitioners advocacy network they've held some successful events around the country one quite successful one in manchester last year and they've also some of their panelists have also spoken at feminist events such as philia which is one of the biggest um feminist events um taking place in the uk every year which is a big conference and also some of their 
So some of the detransitioners were on national evening news last year, which was a really which was good and a really good success. But then if you think how often are transgender people on national TV, it, it still dwarves it. And there's also an organization which I researched this morning and didn't even know existed called Trans Widow Voices. And it's run by a woman called Tinsel Angel who has lost her husband who transitioned. And they support each other and they're mainly via Mumsnet and Twitter and other social media channel, channels where they can talk where they can talk to each other and they've received some criticism for calling themselves widows because their husbands haven't actually died they've just become they've just transitioned so some people are saying they shouldn't be called widows but but they are because they've lost the man that they thought they they, they, they were married to. I don't think we are at this stage yet, so I would like to uh, speak about something else. Uh, I'd like to say uh, about more about me because I haven't actually introduced myself. <laughs> I have been a liberal feminist for something like four years before I uh, turned out, as, the, as we say. Uh, I did that last year, so yeah. And uh, uh, I have a I have a web uh, on, sorry I'm <laughs> losing it a little bit. I have an online magazine that's called feminist.fyi. That's where I used to publish most of the liberal feminist articles. And I started out with translating articles from everyday feminism. So that's uh, where I was. <laughs> uh, yeah, and. Um, uh, I, I turned out, I also, but I also like, I read a lot of books and I was really uh, very much speaking up, uh, out against uh, violence on women. And that's, that's why when I saw in 2017, when I saw the threats against the Turks by the TRAs, I just like immediately saw that there's something going on. And as I, as I saw this and I like continually continue to learn more about the, like just Jesse, Jessica Yaniv or whatever his name is, and all those weird people, uh, I really like picked up, picked out, and, and stuff. And then I thought that uh, how to, I would like to show this to other women, to other liberal feminists. So I wrote about uh, the violent threats of TRAs. I like translated some of those threats and stuff. And I thought that women will just like will be like me, that they will see that this is uh, male violence against women and that they will see that it's not all right and there's something wrong in the whole ideology. But that didn't really happen. And uh, it kind of made me like, uh, like they really made a scapegoat out of me. Uh, uh, trans identified male or fetishist wrote uh, an article about me that uh, uh, was something like he was saying something like uh, uh, about the fe about feminists who hurt women. So me who who wrote and spoke against the violence against women for four years was suddenly a feminist who hurts women. And he wrote this because he has a column column in uh, like the biggest mainstream um, newspaper in our in our uh, like liberal newspaper in our country. So this wasn't just like his own personal blog. This was like uh, really a big thing. And uh, there were also some other stuff and I got blocked on Facebook also. While this exact man was allowed to say fuck off to, to, to me, you know, on, on Facebook, which is like, no, no, no problem. And uh, that's why I, I started to think like, like this Facebook thing doesn't really work for women's rights so much. Like, uh, I don't know if, women can actually think when they're on this on social media like if this is really a good good channel to to raise awareness or whatever there's fourth wave now in the united states that's been around for quite a while um probably since at least 2014 or 15 and that's like a, a group of parents that um educate themselves and eat and uh do outreach um, education and provide materials. Um, and then there's also 
I know of the Peak Resilience Project, which is a group of detransitioning women, um, young women, and they were quite active in about a year ago, but I haven't heard much about the Peak Resilience Project since about a year ago, so I don't know what's going on with them. Um, but I'm, I, I continue to hear a lot of individual stories from women uh, about their experiences with either having a male partner who transitions and, and how that impacts their relationship or, you know, um, having body dysphoria and uh, transitioning themselves, you know, uh, so-called transitioning. Um, so I keep hearing a lot of stories and meeting women that have these experiences, but um, fourth wave now is what I, I know to be probably one of the most organized um, detransitioners slash parents group. And then another thing that I know about is I am friends with a parent who is suing anonymously, like the parents are anonymous um, in this lawsuit because the trans activists are so harsh in my town, especially. And so you can imagine being a parent and having your kids at school where these same students are, because it's just been announced that the other side, the trans side, is has student witnesses now that are coming before the court in the hearing to say how they're the victims and that, you know, they, they are being bullied instead of the reverse, which is these other children who are being bullied into believing in this ideology and having to go along with it in lockstep. And if they don't, then they actually do get bullied. Um, so, but anyway, so um, there are, there is a group of parents in the Madison area that is organizing, but they're doing it anonymously. And I wonder how much more of that might be going on across the country because people are, well, because of the brutal tactics of the transgender movement. Um, it really, those tactics really have been effective at keeping people silent and scared and not organizing.